What's up, everybody? We're doing class 21 today. So we're still, uh, in terms of grappling, going to be looking at some posture and guard and guard passing details. Okay. Uh, and outside of that, we're going to start the warm up today with uh, what we introduced last class with flow drill one. Okay. So we're going to pass the guard, the side mount. Um, you have a good side mount. We'll talk about some things there, just like the first time we go through it. it but we're going to spend a couple minutes doing that for the warm up. We'll go over to mount and then oop escape, all right? We'll see later in the class, we'll do what we'll just call it flow drill two. It's what we've always called it, where you just use the number two guard pass we learned, the knee slide, okay? So it'd be a, a, a little bit of review and we'll also spend um, a fair amount of time reviewing some of the round kick defense fundamentals we worked on, uh, some of the takedown options there, but today we're gonna be blocking the high kick, right? So uh, kick to the head, got some great drills for that. Um, that you can simulate. So like not everybody uh, has the confidence or flexibility. Most people can kick somebody their own height in the head, but a lot of people don't have confidence um, to do that or the flexibility. So we got a good drill um, for, for the high kick defense there. So, you know, we'll be really be breaking down also. Um, we have in the last two classes, but that figure four ankle lock, we'll be seeing a couple other observations on that from finishing one knee and on the hip. And um, so we'll go a little deeper there as well. Okay, so let's start flow drill one. I'll be in your guard first. I'm just gonna talk through this like the first time and then the first time Micah goes through it, if he makes any mistakes, I'll say, hey, don't, you know, don't forget that. So I'm gonna get posture in guard. I do my posture break. I wanna be sure my feet are together in the back. I'm here, can move around a little bit, see if I got good connection. I do, okay. Now look, I'm sliding up to this head arm side mount. I'm going to put his knees the other way and then I'm coming to side mount, okay? Now from side mount with head arm, what I wanna think about doing is starting to slide across and basing here. Now, if, if I'm doing that and he bridges into my arm, right? Yeah, can I, yeah, see I can't get it out. Now turn your head here and there, yeah, yes, and then Bridge and roll. Yes, good. Very nice. Okay, posture and guard. Go ahead and get your break. Good, go ahead and break the guard. Nice. Get those prayer feet. Oh, almost caught it. Good. Now let's see it. Oh, you're connected. Good. Pass. Get the knees facing away. Good. Now come up a little bit. Boom. There's your good upper body control because you got my knees away. Nice. Okay. Now slide over to head arm and kind of put that hand out go back a step right before you create the leg go across put that hand out as a yes and that really limits me too you know now go ahead and go to mount i can time that if i'm thinking about it most people know when they're going to get mounted just be looking for it all right i like to go here first and then it's there see if you can move Okay, so guys, that's flow drill one, right? Again, we'll see, we'll, we'll go through our standing base stuff and um, we'll see later in the class, again, we'll do this kind of flow drill two, you know, real, real creative thing there, but it is, you know, it's, it is the second guard pass that we teach everyone, right? And it's um, the basic ways to escape mount, to transition from side control to mount. It's all things we've done in the first half of this whole program. Okay, so that's flow drill one. This is a warm up, and um, we'll move on to round kick defense next. Now let's look at the high kick. Okay, so you, you can kick me in the head. All right, I've seen you kick some, your own height in the head. I know you, I, I feel like, yeah, you just come up, just round kick. Don't try to roll your hip over anything. You could easily kick me in the head. Not everybody can do that, and sometimes it's a confidence thing. Usually everyone 
unless that, you know, they're really trying to do this to get their fitness, uh, like some more flexibility, like make some gains. Like they, they just really don't have, um, you know, those, those attributes. So for those types of people, I thought, okay, I cannot kick that high. That's fine. We have this drill today. For people that can kick high, most people can kick the height of someone your own, your own stature, your own height, body type. Then it's just convincing them of that, right? The, the test we always do is these mats, two of these mats are six and a half feet apart, right? I'm six foot one. Right? And that's not even not even pushing it here. Not, not being any warm up for stretch. Here's the thing. I can stretch out the length of both of the mats easily, right? You see, I get in that spot, kind of relax. But I work on my flexibility for kicking. Not everybody does that, okay? So we had the drill for that, but we will show today two versions from our knees and from standing. And we're gonna do both. We're gonna do the, the padded sticks from the kneeling position. We'll do the padded sticks from a standing position, okay? So this is kind of the, the idea, right? Is that uh, I'm down, but I have, I have this, right? And just kind of get, get where you're comfortable, right? If this is more comfortable for you, find this like guard passing stuff we're working on. This, this is Seiza, right? If you wanna be here, also fine, right? Just kind of, kind of up to you. Right, so the, the idea is I need to come across first here. You gotta be careful with the fingers here also. So that's the hand that deflects and hits the knee. This one closes the rest of the door, right? And I wanna be sure I'm not taking my arm up too much that it can't go back down and, and, and you know, deflect a, a body attack on, on you know, the lower portion there. Like uh, we talked about deflecting hooks and stuff. Okay, so I need to come across in here. I need a, so this, just with this hand, do, do kick me with that leg real quick. So see how I'm coming across there, right? So I do both and kick again, boom, like that. Now, a little bit of distribution of weight, go ahead and kick again, boom. Like I just lean, I just brought a little bit of my weight over this side. Because anytime I get kicked, I don't wanna get pushed the other way, right? So I gotta kinda distribute some weight in the direction of the, the attack. Okay, if it's this side, I'm coming across there. Go ahead, here, All right? Just boom, like that, okay? So why is it vitally important to hit the leg first? When you deflect the kick, it prevents it from doing the sole thing that it does, which is go around, okay? So, Just, yeah, oh, good job, good reaction. But for the camera, I'm gonna show, if, I, if my foot is touching the back of his head, what do you think my shins do, right? So, boom, see that goes right around. That's why it's called a round kick, okay? So let's um, hop in that kneeling position there. Okay, so, and, Again, you know, you just want to get that, that first hand that moves is kind of the deflecting hand, right? The other hand is just, it's covering, right? Covering. We'll just, it, we're just still in learning phase on this, right? Like, I don't think you've seen this one a whole, a whole, whole lot. Um, it's pretty simple. Once you get it down, you just have to, like, oh, this is the order of operations. So let's do the same side several times in a row before, and then we'll start alternating sides. And then we'll do it with my shins and then we'll do from standing, same pattern, okay? Um, so I'm gonna throw this side several times first because I would say they're right-handed, okay? So boom, good. That's the, that's the motion with the hands. Now give me a little base with that. Even though you're on your knees, kind of lean into it a little bit, yes. Uh-huh. Good, let's go this side. So I'm just gonna go one for one. I'm gonna go one on this side, one on this side. It's 
all right. That's all right. It's going to happen. For as many times we just did, I think uh, I w we did five and five the first time, and um, I wasn't really counting that alternating time, but we did several, like half a dozen more or more. So out of all of that, really good stats. You only messed up one time, right? So now, and again, it's a trust thing. Like, hey, me and you are in this together. We're learning this jujitsu. Let's save our lives someday. Hopefully we never have to use it, but just in case. It is an insurance policy, right? So... <clears throat> Since that's our relationship here, we're friends, we're helping each other figure it out. But we still have to be able to understand, like, so it's a little bit more stressful situation. I'm like, I'm gonna kick you with my shit now, bro. Okay. But again, we trust each other. And then, you know, when you go out and spar, you can use it there too. You can battle test it, right? And that and you need it, you need to test this stuff under stressful situations. This is the beginning of people's journey learning these moves and techniques of self-defense, right? But I teach them in, in like every class across the board that we do here, not just this beginner program. So we'll go, same thing. We'll do three this side. One, two, three. I put a little steam on that one. Three, good. Three this side. One, just a tad higher. Two, three. Okay, so let's do two this side, then we'll do two this side. Okay? One, two, one, two. Hey, kind of got your forearm on that one before last, yeah. and I, yeah, I felt it. But it's just like, that's you know, the old kick deflection, or a little punch deflection, right? We, we deflected our forearms. The whole beginning part of the uh, program we saw that. So um, let me just alter. I'm gonna go right and left. It'll take me a second to switch and go to the other side. I'm not gonna rush you. Um, Cause again, you're still figuring, okay, here it comes. Let me do this. Like, and it will take a long time guys to get to where you don't think about it that way. But this is the only path is sitting here working on it just like this. Okay. So here. That one time you messed up earlier, you made an X in front. And is it even messing up? If you have boxing gloves on, not really messing up a whole lot. And that's really, I've seen people show this both ways, right? Hicks and Gracie shows it this way. So uh, that's why we're doing it this way, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm fundamental. But this, you know, this is the coming through, checking the knee. This is the blocking and protecting. So I don't want to get hit here, right? And then just instead of just a light. Right, just like that earlier when I was kind of, come in. Just that, it's just that, right? If you do too much of it or twist, your your balance here, especially when your knees are a little weird. Okay, let's go right and left again. Right, that side feels super good. Left, let's go left again. Left, that feels better. Right, boom. Okay, let's stand, please. Good. Now let's do from our our you know four point base. We've got good defensive posture. Our knees are bent, our hands are up, uh, our knuckles that are our eye line, we're making that triangle here. So I can do it's like my sight, right? Like, okay, I'm pushing things out of the way. Um, I, that's like, okay, I got you in my center mass in my sight, right? So we'll do this same thing with the padded sticks and then I'll throw a few at your head, all right? I'm about to get my super foot black belt out, bro. Show you what's up. You might show me too, I know. Okay. So let's go this side. Lock. Lock. Good. And we'll go this side. Lock. Lock. Good. Now let's do some alternating. We'll go this side, then this side. Very good. Okay. Now I'm going to go at random. Just with the padded sticks, and then we'll do a pattern with my shins. And I, you know, just be patterned with the shins again. It's just like, okay, what I'm trying to do, and like as soon as I'm like, okay, I'm about to kick you with my bare shin, it just adds 
it adds a layer. Like it, it's not the most stressful thing in the world. Again, we have this like, hey, I'm gonna take care of you, and I'm sitting here telling you that. But accidents still happen, and you know, an accident happens, and I accident, you mess up, and I accidentally kick you right in the skull, it, it might suck. But that's we're building the stress levels up, mm -hmm. right? We're learning it. It doesn't need to be stressful. It needs to be fun. Once we have it figured out, it's like, okay, well, this is for real. And it's always for real. But it's like the past. Well, it's, well okay, let's do it. We both know this. Let's do it. No, no, uh, no patty sticks. Let's do shins off of this time that we do. And say the next time we go through this class together. You know, we just do both of us. We just do shins. Okay? Then it's like, all right, hey, um, you know, the next step after that, like, we're really like, you know, let's say me and you and you're, let's say you're your brown belt. I'm gonna be like, hey man, I'm gonna put your shin pads on. I'm really gonna try and kick you in the face. And all you can do is that. Mm -hmm. I'm a, you don't know which, but I'm just gonna do round kicks. I'm gonna try and kick you in the head. I got shin pads on, that kind of saved you a little bit. But I see people get knocked out with shin pads on all the time. And then that's like, oh man, it's a little more stress, right? And then the most stressful, like, you know, even being in a fight, like I remember the Cora's first fight was no shin pads kickboxing she was like whoa she had several fights but that was the first one that shin pads and so it's like a, a psychological right it's just the stress added like a and, and, and you know so but think about like okay well there's no ref there's no ring there's no cage there's no shin pads and someone's attacking you and that's just the way it is right and maybe this is statistical odds of them throwing a high kick or low but we got, you know, again, things happen in fights all the time that we're never ready for. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go random. I'm a little fast on this, sorry. All right, good. See, you showing us up twice so far. And other times, just like a tweak of your distribution of weight. And I would say probably that's just because it was more on like your your feel real strong on this side. But you know that may be because like okay, just your body's bracing like okay, that's the a right hand or so in the rear kick like that's yeah. the side I would want you to be strong, right? Um, so that's that's totally totally good. Now um, I'm just gonna go high kick to my shins. I'm gonna go very light, um, but it's gonna be bone, you know. So. Let's just kind of, you just try and time it, get my timing down, I'm gonna go the same timing every every time I kick you. And again, not, not everybody can do this, right? I, even though I'm 36 years old, I'm the, I'm the head instructor here, I, I've kickboxed for almost 20 years. So, you know, that's, I can, I can do high kicks for you here today. Try not to lean like this, like this. Right, so it's more of a, a side versus a, like a boxer's slip. Right, like a boxer slip a punch like this. A boxer can't do that. There might be a kick right there. So, but, okay, well we're just self-defense, BJJ, jiu-jitsu practitioners, what about us? You don't want to do it either if we're thinking kick defense. Okay, so, but that's just, again, that's just like the side, so it doesn't feel as good. So just, just a subtle redistribution of weight to the side, right? So when this hand starts going across, boom. When this hand starts going across, look how my weight's different. Boom, just subtly, right? Okay, so good base, hips forward. Let's draw. Oh, good, I got your elbow a little bit. So tuck a little bit more on that so that doesn't happen because it actually can hurt your elbow. I don't know if it did. It feel awesome on my shin, but I feel like I could kick you a lot harder, and that would have not been cool, right? Good. Okay, good. It's the same concept of I'm going to come across here. You know, um, our jiu-jitsu coach calls that uh, term like when you're doing something like this, sweeping the center. Right, it, and we might, it, you know, do that because you're punching. I'm getting on on the outside of it. It's all good. Okay, so um, you know that's uh, that's our round kick defense overview. That's everything. The whole thing for the whole program. Right, that's everything we teach on this. So you know, 
went back at these three classes for that. Uh, or the, if you want to watch it in context, the whole class is 19, 20, 21. Okay. For that, we we're talking about defending front kicks. Okay? And those the three classes before that. So we're you know, got a nice little grouping there. Um, that's that. We'll be moving on, um, look at another context just for retention uh, on the inside leg throw after this. Okay, so we've got another takedown from the over-under clinch, right? Over-under clinch is a, a core mode of clinching for this whole program, okay? Uh, it is uh, definitely the first clinch I ever remember learning when I started training in mixed martial arts in 2006, okay? So <clears throat> a lot of people <clears throat> will play an underhook around the back. We were going to play with our palm up. Okay, and then we're taking this, it's gonna be a C grip on his tricep, okay? So here we have just a mirror stance, right? Now, there'll be things where like uh, people lean on you and do things like that. We're not really getting into any of that today. We're just over under stance. We're find a good base there, right? Yeah, oh, that's good. Side to side too, hip to, nice, good, we got it. But I don't wanna fight him here. I'm gonna push him to this back corner. So think of this as an, X axis here, right? I'm gonna push into this back. My back left, uh, back left, right? It's his right, but I drive here and that makes that leg light, okay? When that leg's light, I just step in here. When he goes down, I can wrap this leg and attack with, you know, any, any mode of leg lock I, I want, really straight ankle lock, we'll do a figure four. Um, I can switch to this grip. There's some cool options there, right? Or as he's going down, I could just go into a guard pass. So that's, you know, as much context as, as we'll mention. But the takedown, just super simple, right? Here, drive to the back corner, here, step in, here. What I, what I notice when I teach this, and this is my all ranks class or the beginner class, is that you get pulled down sometimes. It's not a big deal. If you get pulled down and don't do anything, then it kind of sucks. You have to go down with it, okay? So if you ever feel off balance on this, just go into the windshield wiper guard pass. Just take that same side knee across that you're going down. That is the answer. So instead of going forward off balance, just like we talk about in other classes, reposturing, we'll talk about later on passing the guard, you want to drop down, okay? Drop down into a timed guard pass, okay? So over under clinch. All right, which side would you like? This side? Okay, drive me to the back corner. See, that made my leg light. Even though I'm pushing back into you, it's still light. Good, pick it up, step inside. Boom, there it is. Nice, and you got the leg, right? With you know, standing ankle lock variations, you could um, step to the guard, you could spin around the leg and do a different leg lock entirely. You know, it's just a, a lot of really great options there. Let's do one more for you. Drop me in the back corner, good, and trip. Nice. Okay, now if you didn't have that or whatever, yes. Think about that guard now. Okay. All right, so that's the inside leg throw. We saw in previous uh, classes we were doing, defending against a front kick and going to a version of the outside leg throw. In a future class, we'll mention this one where I do the same thing, but I step past and I go to the far leg. Okay, so inside leg throw versus outside leg throw is the kind of airplay. Today we did inside leg throw. I think I just spoke a second ago, right? But that's cool. Uh, in judo, it's ouchigari, right? It means uh, major inside. And if it's gari, it's reap. We're not doing the actual reap with our leg. You can do that. But then what happens? You stand on one leg in a fight. Right? And that's like when, when the pullover really starts to happen. So what I'm doing here is I just hook and push them over with my hands. Works very nicely. All right, we'll be back with uh, some ground techniques after this. Okay, so figure four ankle lock fundamentals. It's one of the essential techniques everybody should know. In the sport of jujitsu, this ankle lock here we're gonna do today is legal for white belts. Right? So if you're doing the class and you're a white belt in jiu-jitsu, you could go compete and use this. But so many people don't train it. There's a stigma with leg locks. 
we teach fundamental ad hocs to everyone. And this, it gets no more fundamental than this, right? Again, it's an essential technique that everybody that does jujitsu should know, okay? So we saw this a little bit in some previous uh, work we were doing in, in videos from what we caught a round kick, right? Or we picked up a single leg and we took them down and we had their ankle. And we could finish from standing in a couple of different ways. And we haven't at this point in the program gone into standing guard passes or breaks yet. But when we introduce that, we'll bring this back up, okay? Because it comes in there. We're going to do it from the perspective that we've talked about so far, from the kneeling guard pass posture and guard situation, okay? Um, so anytime I open the guard in, with like a knee in the center or a posture break, either one, I could go for this, okay? So, <clears throat> here, um, the, you know, the, the break that we did last class is getting here, um, I'm wedging everything in, I'm riding out, and boom, it, it's guards are broken, okay? Now, uh, from this point, right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up with a knee, and, it, and it's just kind of situational on how you set this up. Right? We can do it off the, off the posture break. We could do it off the knee and center. Knee and center, we bring this knee up first. With the posture break, typically bring the other knee up first. Right? But whichever you choose, like that shelves that leg nicely. Right? But this creates an inside wedge where I can kind of fall to the side and catch you here. Okay? So <clears throat> we saw in previous classes where we were in this situation. Right, so, boom, right there. So whether you get from standing or kneeling, it's fine. Whether it's one knee up or the other, it's fine, right? Um, but it is it's something that comes up from the guard pass situation, okay? Now, let's talk about two modes of leverage. One is I'm here, right? And um, let's turn with your head facing that way, please. Okay, good, and just hands down, you just relax. Where I'm gonna grab my lapel, okay? So I just come through and I grab my lapel and I take the slack out. That's the number one thing. You can't be around his calf, you need to slide out and be here, right? Everything's taken out slack-wise. Then I can leverage, okay? So <clears throat> when this is a situation, I can also, instead of the lapel, what if you didn't have a lapel? You could do this figure four. Okay, now you can go to the bicep. I feel like that kind of lessened my grip here. The wrist feels really good, right? And I saw his hand get ready to tap, so it probably doesn't feel really good for him. But I was like, man, this feels great. And he's like, yeah, you're right. right? So here, take that slack out. Now the finish on your side is here, okay? And I cannot have my elbow here, I gotta tuck it, right? And then it's a forward hip movement for the leverage. Okay, so when we talk about our hips kind of pushing into our figure four, or in this instance where I'm grabbing my own lapel, that energy started dragging you towards me. I mean, that was happening on the map when we we're doing it from standing here. When you get connection, you just whoosh. So um, we we'll want to be sure and always take that slack out, right? And again, we can do here, where we grab the lapel, right? Or we can do like we've seen in previous classes we put out, where you can do a figure four, okay? So <clears throat> one more time, please. Uh, and we'll do this. We'll get you to kind of turn diagonally. There you go. Okay, so look, here's posture break, and I'm coming up here, racking that leg, and falling back, okay? I'm gonna go over this idea of like, when you fall straight back, they can, they can try to get out in a certain way. We've got a counter that we can do for that, okay? Then like one of the problems will be ensuring that you get to the leg wrap before you get on the side. So be sure we focus on that. So look, whether it's here or whether it's here, my elbow's not on the mat. This is under your hamstring over here. This is on the hip. Okay, take the slack out, ankle up, okay? 
So, <clears throat> one more time. From here, the knee in the center break. Boom. All right, so look, I'm already thinking about this, okay? Now look, I can fall back and take the slack out. You've got to be able, if you do that, to understand that they are gonna probably come forward. So it's not that big of a deal. You just gotta get in here, all right? And again, whether it's here or here, it's fine. Falling back is not wrong. You just have to understand that when I go to fall back here, you may try and come up. I'm gonna wedge with this foot behind your hamstring until I can get here so that doesn't happen. Boom. Right, so it's kind of back and then to the side. All right, get in my guard, please. Does this do the knee in the center? Is that the same way I was just showing? <clears throat> okay, so there, get a good posture, wedges, widen out, knee in the middle, guard breaks, good. Bring this knee up, combat base. Nice, yeah, hook the leg. Now, start kind of sliding down the leg as you sit back, block here with the foot in the hamstring, sit down and then throw your foot in the hip and go to your side. Boom. Okay, yes. Does that feel good? Take all the slack out, connect your elbows. Good, don't be on the elbow, kind of collapse it. Yes. Okay, now, you're ready to engage with those hips. Forward with them. Ah, good. And again, it's our hips. We don't want to have to arch. Okay, try again. Nice. Okay, now. This way. Collapse down. Yeah, finish, try to finish one on the lapel now. Okay. Now, remember that, that leverage we were discussing the other day that takes the slack out that bringing your, your hips are coming forward, but everything comes forward when your hips come forward. Okay, so go. Ah, yes. Okay, so all hips driving into this for the leverage, okay? You don't even need this anymore, all right? Take out a little slack with that, yes, good. And connect that elbow un underneath you really good, like you're pulling it back, yes. Now hips. Ah, see, I felt like once you did that, I felt it a lot more, it curled my toes up, right? That, and a lot of people have the toe taco, right? So you make a little, just like a little taco shape out of their, uh, out of their foot, okay? Connect again. Hip. Ah, yes. Okay, so go again. Mm -hmm. On the base, slide back, nice. Foot in the hip. Let's see, wedge here. Um, instead of in the middle, the hamstring and then down in the hip. Good. Okay, take out all the slack. Ah, oh, serious business. Go ahead and move your hip down. <laughs> That's good. That's your best one you've ever done. Like I was just like, I said, I said take the slack out. You're like, okay, I was starting to understand what you mean with that. Great. Now, what's your? Let me get the, just get the lapel on this one. Okay, yeah, that one. Okay, take the slack out. I'm like, oh no, man, this is terrible. I gotta get this up here and start doing this. Okay. Put your hand out there. Go down to both knees. You can um, leave this foot in the center, actually. And just go down to your knees and, pot and drive up on your hand, right? So yes, right? That's helping you posture up and that's, now as you do that, um, start to engage your hip with that. Ah, terrible. Okay, so watch here. This is just a, a troubleshoot. Because the thing is, as I mentioned, when I start going back first, and you feel this, like, okay, I've got to take, taking some slack out with that, I got some connection, you're gonna start coming forward. When you feel that stops you from coming forward, a lot of people push it down. Okay, now scoot over. That's fine. Here. Okay, so whether it's the figure four, for the lapel, boom. Okay, so. 
from just a seated position. Get your lapel. Good. And really good connection. Take that elbow back. Good. All right, now, start to fall back into the side. Good. And posture up. Good. Not a big deal if this comes out, but I was leaving it in the center, okay? Not a big deal. <clears throat> if you come all the way out, then it's like the knee bar, okay? And we mentioned, and it's hard really, but like a lot of times the the leverage, it's hard for the person that you're doing it to, like on the standing version of this, um, it makes them want to rotate belly down, but they, they really can't. You, you stomp that stomp through, step through, good guard, yeah, okay? So we, we need to look at one other observation with this, and we'll have seen everything there is to teach pretty much. Uh, again, I'll come up, uh, this will come up a little bit with some of the standing guard stuff. Standing guard breaks, uh, a sweep we'll introduce later, the double ankle sweep. It kind of is like this little, little ecosystem of a few of the fundamental techniques we teach for to everyone where this becomes applicable again. And it's, it, it's gonna make a lot of sense when it comes up, all right, because we've done this, but there is this like one other little blip on the straight ankle lock and, and you know, you, you take this course, you get, a, you get a fundamental dose of straight ankles. I mean, it's great. Like, it, whereas most people in Jiu-Jitsu academies don't even do this technique, okay? We used to be that Jiu-Jitsu Academy. Okay, so I'll be in your guard real quick. So this one, you said a second ago, you know, if you if I bring the foot all the way through, it's, it's sort of rotating to more of a knee bar situation. But you can definitely turn somebody belly down from the ankle right there. But we do that on the knee bar, okay? So <clears throat> here, we're in this combat base, we broke this guard, right? And we're, we're uh, wanting to uh, pursue this ankle lock, whether it's figure four or whether it's here, okay? So what I want you to think about is that same idea that we just mentioned on the knee bar, right? Or what we just did off the defense. This is all the same idea, except a second ago we were using it defensively. I'm gonna turn you towards a belly down situation, right? But I've gotta post my hands to get there, okay? Can you push me over? Yeah. Right? So I mentioned this earlier. We have to find and maintain base here. Right? If you can just push me over, I might get out at the same time. Right? I might lose my grip. I might let go of my lapel or figure four or whatever. Right? So I'm going to put my hand here. Base. Rotate. Okay? So I'm here. It looks like I might even be guard passing. Slide there. Okay, so let's, um, let's see that with you and my guard. Okay, and uh, just start with the combat base. We we'll assume we already got there. Okay, so yeah, you can do figure four or you can do either one, it doesn't matter. Oh, actually it will matter on this one. Grab your lapel, because we need that hand to base. Okay, so I've seen people drop into this, like credible sources from standing with the figure four, but there's a lot of, it, like, the base is different when you do that, okay? Here you're on one knee, we need this hand right here. Good, now, slide this knee of yours in the crook of my knee. Sorry, and then put the other leg up. Good, all right, now start trying to take weight off that hand. Can you take weight off that hand? See, find a good base. So if I push you, that doesn't happen. There you go. Okay, don't worry about my knee. Take a little slack out of the lock. Yes, th that. Okay, this foot I feel like needs to be a little more uh, around this here. Good. Good, now sit back. Finish it. Good. Okay. That finding the base is important. And it's just like, oh, how do I find base here? I've never been, you know. Yeah. Probably, probably haven't been there at all, okay? Back in combat base. Let's get there again. Okay, yeah, slack out of the lock, finish there, post the hand. All right, now, go in there. Right in this, you only need to turn that much, right here, good. Widen this thing out a little bit. Good, good, posture up. 
Okay, let's check your base real quick. I can't get out, finish it. Good. And just, it's that same hip one more time. Bring the hip under you a little bit more, okay? Just a little more leverage. Anybody, it's like you're trying to posture up. You're trying to stand up straight, right? And if you were doing that, like you're gonna lead through your form, I'm gonna get good posture here. All right, so hand on the mat, base. Good, engage that hip. Ah, hold on, go back, go back. It hurt, but posture up and bring the hip forward, forward. Ah, there you go. It's different from this posture, right? And like you were getting some bit, like, but a lot of times um, the, the slack removal gets somebody to kind of, whoop, oh, yeah, I felt that, right? It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> they kept going, you know, it's like I'm communicating with you, it's good, but, um, in a competition or, or a adrenalized situation where there's maybe no taps, I got to break your ankle, you know, so, um, but really engage that hip coming up. See how your back's rounded? Yeah. Try and make it straight. Ah, okay, good. Okay, so that's kind of three, three ways um, that uh, finished on our side from a guard pass situation. We are turning belly down when you try and defend me falling back into the sun, right? And then that is technically a belly down, right? Like when you finish, you're, you're kind of in this posture or your belly's down and you're, you're kind of coming up into a posture they tap before that happens, right? They typically call that a belly down because it turns the partner belly down, but that the leverage of how you're turning away is like that. Just because my knee is pinned I can't really rotate out. It's sort of a similar idea, but it's a, you're rotating in that way. And like one time earlier we got into it and it was full belly down. So see some different perspectives there. And um, that's uh, straight ankle fundamentals. All right, we're back for some more posture fundamentals. Like these are the basics. If you're gonna play in the guard at all, if you're gonna be inside someone's guard, you have to understand posture. Right? And you have to understand concepts like reposturing, maintaining posture and base, and then using your posture and base to create leverage, to open the guard, right? Just to, to create pressure. Okay. Like a posture break creates a lot of pressure. So we're going to take a look at some things that are when uh, we can't really uh, get into posture. We're not there yet. Or we're there and you start trying to take it away. Okay. We've seen this. Put me in your guard, please, sir in a previous class. When I, when I posture up here, you do this, this the white belt sit up sweep, all right? I'm posturing up and you have to go like this, boom, yeah, nice. Good job. Okay. So the, the great timing for that, that we teach everyone is to do it when I'm posturing up. Okay, so if my posture is down, what am I gonna do, right? I've gotta, I gotta kind of find the time to posture up where he can't really count on me, okay? So the basic idea on reposturing is gonna be, a lot of people show here, think about, yeah, you're monitoring his biceps, but I'm monitoring his hips too, okay? So, <clears throat> Micah, uh, what I want you to do, we'll start with a cross collar, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of monitor, and you can attack with anything you want. Okay, and I'm gonna just try to get posture right now. I can't do that. You pull me down. Don't let me go. I can't go up. It's hurting my neck. Okay, so but you know you can't really do anything right here. You got me down. All right, so um, you just kind of kind of grapple and just kind of roll, roll. And you kind of, like when you went here and here, I was like, okay, there's maybe my, my opportunity. Think about this, go to attack for, like there we were messing around in the, in the collar grip and nothing was happening, right? Because I've been monitoring some biceps. 
So start that same way again, but then maybe open up for like a Kimura armbar, omoplata. Just start thinking about some of those moves that like, oh, the lapel choke wasn't working. And I'll just kind of stay here and be patient until, okay, I know I can stand, uh, posture up without hurting my neck. Okay, good game. Okay. So that's how you posture up without um, them seeing it coming so much, right? So if I know that you're gonna sit up, so let me go ahead and let go of that. If I know that if you catch me doing this, you can sit up to me. I gotta do it where you, you're not expecting. Okay, so start with the collar grip, all right? Go. So you, you just have to be patient. Finding posture and guard. I learned that from Chris Howder, right? One of the first 12 American black belts in the United States. But you can't just unplan, like, I'm gonna get my posture down. It doesn't work that way, right? And if, it, if you, you know, sort of do it in this unplanned manner, people can sit up sweep you, okay? So then the next thing is a lot of people don't understand when to do the sit up sweep, right? So right here. We'll, we'll tile this together and let you do a couple reps on it too. Okay. So remember we talked about the guard sit-ups. Do three guard sit-ups real quick. One, two, three. You see, I'm raising up a little bit, just the appropriate amount for what your weight is. So I'm on my tram. I'm balancing, I'm finding base. Okay, I need to raise up a little bit so I don't go forward. Simple. You try to do the sit-up sweep, please. I come up. Do the sit-up sweep again. I step over and I can take the back. Okay? So on this, here. <clears throat> So let's say we're playing in here and we're monitoring hips and biceps and he tries to attack with a Kimura. That's my time to posture up, right? Then he tries to sit up sweep me. That's my time to posture up, right? And go back into a break. If you fall off, like open your guard when you try to sit up sweep and just Tie me here. So let's say you see it coming, but I know what to do too. So go ahead and try. Hips up. And I take your back. I'll just step over. And we're here. Back mount with the hook. Okay. Now the last thing is what if you can't get posture? All right? We call this reposture. So it's finding posture. There's raising my, my base and posture up. I'm countering the sit-up sweep because sit-up sweep, you might just be trying to sit up and pull me back down. You might be trying to sweep me. I need to be able to defend both directions. I got to maintain that good base. It needs to be mobile up and down, right? But reposturing. Let me get your guard, please. Um, hug me like this. Oh, that's not hurt my back too. You know, I felt it a little bit between my shoulder blades. So don't do that. That's probably why I feel it. Years of doing stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is he wants me down, so I'm gonna stay down. I've got a base. I come forward and I've got to maintain balance here. And then that's what we do here. We come up, we drop our knees down. And I got posture. And pass. Knee slide, windshield wiper, whatever you want, right? So there's gonna be times where someone has you down. Walk forward into an all fours base situation and drop your knees, right? And here, and just go into your basic guard pass, okay? So You've got just uh, that, that's that's some application on all the stuff we've already learned in the last two classes. You try real quick. 
A lot of people emphasize holding the biceps down. You don't need to emphasize that. Right? See how they're slack there? When, when I do that, go to my hip with your elbow. Oh, remember how I was wedging your legs out and then moved that knee up a little bit. Like, move it forward. Yeah, see, now you're taking slack out. Yeah. You see, you're just tightening up. You're taking the space away. Right? Now let me have a collar. I'm going to cross choke you. All right? So, but same, same thing. I ain't going to cross choke you if I can't turn my hips. So I'm getting bored with this already, dude. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get the kill over here. So I'm going to go here, posture. Right? That's kind of the basic idea. Monitor my hips. Good. I'm bored with this. I'm going to go here. Stay there. I'm going to sit up sleepy. I'm already in a good spot. Step over this side. Take the back. Nice. And here's the thing too, Micah. Earlier when you were like keeping the collar for, you know, whatever it was, 30 seconds. I should have been the reposture then, but I was trying to teach the other lesson. You know what I'm saying? Anytime you, you're stuck down there, no, it's not impatience. It's like, oh, I can't posture. I can't, he's not gonna let me posture. I've got to reposture, okay? So um, that's kind of the idea on that. So let's start posture down, good. Monitor my hips, all right? I'm just gonna, I'm holding your dude. You're not gonna posture up on me. Step over it as soon as you get to the top. Boom. Nice. Okay, let's do the reposture with you real quick. So look, just feel that you are not like, don't strain your back or anything, but try and pull up away from this. And see, I was able to lift you up, but I was like, man, that's going to hurt me, right? There's a way to prevent slams from here. If they have their uh, a foot wide enough for me to put a leg in, you, and somebody's like, say somebody's really big, and they're slamming you on the, on the ground, you can base with this foot and prevent the slam, okay? So here, kind of bear crawl up uh, into like almost an inchworm position, Let's teach these in, in fitness. Yeah, there you go. Head, head can be kind of on the mat. Put some weight on your hands. Drop your knees down. And you open my guard. Just do whatever pass you want. Just windshield wiper pass this way. Crotch your foot. You switch to knee side. Yes. Here. Nice. Okay. So, it's a, a good review in itself. Right? But, Posture and guard. It's like for me, I started learning this stuff from Jack Hoffer, who I'm trying with this weekend. But um, I've worked on with Chris Howder. This is just a fundamental that if posture and guard is this stuff and this other stuff we've seen, it's like a continuum, right? Where I have to find it, maintain it. If you're doing this, I move it this way and I can create leverage to break here or here, etc. Okay? So. Next thing we will uh, take a look at is our second club drill. All right. And it'll be, uh, really, we're just introducing one uh, little new idea on um, when to do an UPA escape, right? It's not even really a new technique. Everybody knows the UPA escape. It's just going to be a little, you know, like a little dash of seasoning. All right. Good work. So we're doing flow drill two. And whether you have to go windshield wiper pass to knee slide because you've got your foot trapped, or you just go straight in the knee slide because it's your favorite guard pass. A lot of people really like it. And I, I'm one of those people. Okay? If it does knee and center guard break, go ahead and do that, Micah. Boom. Good. Now, come up uh, combat base, and you start passing the guard, and I frame here. Okay? Lean forward a little bit. So he destructs those frames and goes cross side. All right? Now, when he does that, I need to be slipping this underhook in. So turn a little bit, right? And this can't just be an underhook here. I gotta connect with it, I gotta drive, okay? Go ahead and go all the way to reverse Kessa, Micah. There, so he's stepping over there and he's finding connection to the floor with his foot here. Nice, and he's wedging here with this arm. But I'm, I'm forming connection to my own and he's gonna wanna step over to mount, right? Go back, 
So if I will connect here, that stop strikes, and if I'll pull his hip down, that'll stop the step over. If he persists, try to step over Micah, I roll, I'm in his guard. And we start the uh, cycle again, All right? And do the posture break or knee and center, either one, right? Because again, we taught that is like, I'll do posture break this time and trap my foot. All right, I made a mistake on my posture break fly. All right, I'm trying for that windshield wiper pass. You trap my foot. Oh no. Now I'm here. All right, now get your underhook. Uh huh. All right, I get this reverse Kessa position. Connect. Grab my hip. Pull it down. Oh, good. All right, as I try and step over, you're in. Boom. You almost had me rolled over before I even stepped over. So this one times the step over, but if you do everything right, You'll put him in side mount. You'll reverse. Okay, so go ahead and hand center again. Lean, nice, boom. Pass, framing. You're coming, uh, go in the end of center on this one. Oh, I'll trap your foot, I will do the same one. Yeah, boom. Here, good. Now switch to reverse casting. As you do that, I'm going here. You try and step over, I'm going here. And the car is already open, all right? And that's flood drill too. All right, so we call this like uh, this sort of UPA, a transitional escape. You catch them while they're trying to put you them out, not after. It's always harder after. Right? It's just a, a, it's different. So this this prevents the mount. So you time it. Use the principle of timing as they're stepping over. Like I said, sometimes you do a good job, you'll even get them before then. All right.